What is your reaction to the results that we know so far? It looks like it's not as big of a red wave as some people thought there would be. Well, it's a big win uh, for the Democrats and for democracy. I mean, we way exceeded expectations, uh, winning in Pennsylvania the Senate seat, winning Maggie Hassan easily, holding all three seats, uh, Congress seats in Nevada. And I am confident and uh, believe uh, Senator Mastow will pull it out. I think what it showed is that the American people are not going to tolerate extremism. And while they were upset on the economy, upset about the price of gas, they're simply not going to vote for election deniers. They're not going to vote for people uh, who believe that we should restrict the right to abortion and not even have exceptions for rape or incest. And uh, they came out and maybe they had some problem with our party, but they certainly weren't going to switch over to some of the extreme Republicans. That said, Bloomberg analysis showed that candidates who propagated the big lie actually got more engagement on social media and that those social media platforms profited from it. This morning, we, we, we learned that Meta is laying off 11,000 people. Twitter just laid off thousands of people. Are you at all concerned that these layoffs are going to make the problem of mis- and disinformation worse? Well, first, I was just on a human level. I'm... Uh sad and concerned about the layoffs. Uh, I, as you know, represent a district in the Bay Area, and so many of those people and their families are uh, in my district. Uh, but more broadly, uh, we're going to need more investment in uh, content uh, moderation that uh, respects the First Amendment, but that is not allowing speech that incites violence or that is spreading blatant conspiracies and lies. Uh, just to get more attention. And, and that's something that uh, Congress needs to regulate. We haven't, uh, and we need to regulate on privacy. Uh, but otherwise, those uh, social media platforms are spewing often uh, real poison into our uh, democratic discourse. Well, big tech regulation didn't pass before the midterms. What are the chances of it passing in a lame duck Congress? And does it die after that? Is it, is it still going to be on the agenda? I think we have a good chance of passing some of the privacy legislation uh, that had a overwhelming bipartisan vote out of committee. Uh, there's debate about whether the privacy regulations are as strong as California's, but uh, that is a promising vehicle. On the antitrust regulation, it, it, uh, it has a harder uh, it hill because the Republicans in the House have not been uh, for it. So uh, that really depends uh, on where the Republicans are and on the uh, on the lame duck, whether we can get uh, 50 uh, uh, plus votes in the Senate and, and actually uh, overcome also the filibuster. And then finally, next year, you know, the challenge is that every member of Congress thinks that we need to regulate big tech. They all just have their own vision of how to do it and they all cancel each other out. And so nothing happens. And the real challenge will be, can we come to a compromise uh, with the Republicans if they do have a slim majority in the House? Uh, to pass sensible, common-sense reforms. You've got a new label on your Twitter profile identifying you as a U.S. representative. Some accounts are already being labeled official. What's your opinion on the approach Elon Musk is taking at Twitter so far and the difference between the right to free speech and the right to amplification of free speech? Well, look, I know Elon Musk, and I will give him the same advice privately as I do publicly, which is he shouldn't be running Twitter, just like Jeff Bezos doesn't run the Washington Post, and people who own CNN don't run CNN, uh, and Michael Bloomberg doesn't sit there running Bloomberg Television. Uh, I think he should appoint an independent board of people who will make the day-to-day uh, decisions. Some of the ideas of getting rid of bots, those are good ideas. I mean, the, the bots are responsible for some of the worst algorithmic amplification. But uh, I don't think Elon wants to be sitting there making a decision about which tweet should be on and which tweet should be off. And yet he is also, you know, ahead of the election, he encouraged people to vote Republican. You know, party aside, what's your view on that? Well, obviously disagree with him on that, but I mean, that is his First Amendment right to support whoever he wants. I mean, we have CEOs of major corporations and people who take positions in elections. And I obviously uh, strongly disagree with that view. And, and, and I'm glad that the Democrats did well. 
but I don't think that uh, we can say that uh, Musk should be free to support the candidates that he believes in. Now, we talked a little bit about the layoffs earlier. We're seeing cuts across the board, hiring freezes. It's not just Twitter and Facebook. It's Apple. It is Alphabet. This is your district. Some folks are saying Silicon Valley is turning into a wasteland or San Francisco is dead. How do you think this area survives this economic shock? Well, let's put things in perspective. I mean, we had $10 trillion of market value in uh, one of the wealthiest uh, places. Now, our big challenge was the cost of housing. Our big challenge was uh, the cost of living for working families. And, and that will remain uh, one of the big challenges. But I've uh, been uh, in the Valley for over 20 years, and I've seen the ups and I've seen the downs. Uh, and I think we're a leading indicator of uh, some of the slowing in the economy. But I have no doubt that uh, these companies are very resilient and, and will come back. Uh, what we need to under to address is the housing issue. How do we build more affordable housing? Uh, how do we uh, bring down some of the price of gas and groceries uh, for ordinary middle class and working class families in my district? This was such a digital first advertising push with the most expensive midterm cycle ever. Do you think there's going to be any movement in Congress in a new Congress for a deeper look at election spending? I do. Well, one, I think we are moving away from traditional television ads to digital uh, marketing. That is something that has uh, increased in every campaign cycle. Uh, two, I believe we need massive campaign finance reform. I mean, I don't take PAC money. I have this idea of democracy dollars, which is to make every voter give them $100 so that that is the money in campaigns as opposed to all this big money. And that's the biggest single reform we could have for our democracy. Uh, the Republicans, candidly, have always opposed that. They think that there should be unlimited uh, spending uh, from uh, people, uh, whatever their means. And I, I just fundamentally disagree with that. FCC Commissioner Brendan Carr was just on the show. He called for an outright ban on TikTok because of concerns about our data going back to China. Is that something that you would support or, or think should be examined? I prefer the administration's approach, which is, uh, in my view, much more prudent, and that is that uh, TikTok can operate uh, and uh, in the United States, but they have to agree to a lot of basic uh, security concerns, such as keeping all Americans' data in the United States, making sure it's American-operated servers, making sure they have uh, privacy policies uh, in, in keeping American data. So I, I, I think President Biden, like he does often, is taking a more prudent and thoughtful approach, which recognizes that millions of Americans are on this platform uh, and expressing themselves on the platform, uh, but wants to make sure that none of that data uh, goes to the China, China or the Chinese Communist Party. How does this impact Biden's nomination of Gigi Sohn to the FCC, given the FCC is deadlocked? Well, I think it depends on uh, on the Senate. Uh, you know, if we keep the Senate uh, and it, that that nomination has a better chance, I have a lot of respect for Gigi Sohn. I've worked with her uh, in the past, and I, I hope that uh, the nomination will go forward. Now, uh, bigger picture, you know, you've made some comments about tech m and You said you think it's clear now that Facebook shouldn't have been allowed to buy WhatsApp or Instagram. Looking forward, what's your intention for, you know, uh, scrutiny around big tech deals? You've got Microsoft still trying to buy Activision. You've got Adobe trying to buy Figma. Um, but given these bigger regulatory concerns, but also what's happening with the economy. Well, I think if you have a transaction that is over $5 billion and where it looks like you're uh, purchasing a potential competitor, a competitor that could emerge, then the default should be on the company to show that that is not anti-competitive. Right now, the default is that it is considered uh, competitive and uh, it's for the prosecution to show the other way. And that's what Amy Klobuchar's bill does. It changes the default for these large transactions. And that's why it's so important to pass. If that bill doesn't pass, then uh, the Justice Department and FTC just don't have uh, the tools to often uh, scrutinize these deals. 
Any thoughts on regulatory scrutiny of crypto and how that should play out, especially given the uh, recent acquisition or uh, potential acquisition of, of FTX by Binance? That was a big surprise. Uh, look, on the macro level, I think we need to have reserve requirements for stable coins. Uh, you should make sure that the stable coins are linked to dollars so you don't have things like what happened with Terra. Uh, I think in terms of the acquisitions, they should be uh, the same standard of scrutiny as any merger. And, and there I believe that these larger mergers need to go uh, through a place where the default is that they could be anti-competitive. And more broadly, we just need to understand what part of crypto is regulated by the CFTC and what part should be regulated by the SEC. And I think we need clarity on that. Well, we did just get a headline that, that the U.S. is now probing FTX over how it handled client funds and lending. Last question, Representative Khanna, what's your assessment of the Democrats' chances in 2024 with Biden versus newly elected, newly re-elected Governor Gavin Newsom? Well, I think uh, President Biden will run. I think after last night, uh, probably uh, ends all the chatter of whether he'll run or not. He's had one of the most successful midterm elections uh, of any modern president, and and candidly, a more successful election uh, in the midterms than our two previous Democratic presidents, who were two of the greatest politicians of their generation. So my expectation is the Democratic Party will quickly coalesce around him. Now the interesting question is whether Donald Trump runs, uh, and uh, I think that uh, remains to be seen with DeSantis's performance. And so the speculation, I think, now will be much more on the Republican side. Forty-eight hours ago, it may have been on the mm -hmm. Democratic side.